All right, well, I'd like to introduce our mayor, uh, Marty Bloom. Short introduction, that was good. <laughs> well, hello, and I'm really glad you're here. Uh, great turnout. You know, Santa Barbara started as a little tiny village, and when that um, earthquake happened in 1925, a group of citizens had already gotten together, but they got, they, most of the buildings went down and they got together and they planned a beautiful community. And I am truly grateful that they did that. Our, um, our history of uh, citizen participation in Santa Barbara is huge. And uh, when you walk around Santa Barbara, you can thank the citizens who've lived here. It's a very beautiful place. What we are doing tonight is to take the process of the general plan update to you all. And we don't have a government project that we're hiding or anything. There's, there's nothing that we already have made a decision on. Um, we've decided uh, uh, last time we, we did this in the 1980s. Some of you may have been there. How many of you remember the 1980 uh, general plan update? And I'm one. It was a very good process. We won a state award and a national award for it. It's a very good pro for the process. And this time, uh, we're going to do the same kind of process in that we're going to call in as many people as we can, and you are the first group. So this is really good. And uh, I'm excited. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what you have to say about Santa Barbara, what you like, what you might be worried about, what you're not worried about because you know it's going to be OK. Uh, what are the things you don't like about Santa Barbara? We're all here to listen to you, and I, I think this is very exciting. So citizen uh, planning, you know, some cities don't do this. Some cities are afraid to ask their citizens what they think, and we're not, because we know that you live in Santa Barbara because you love Santa Barbara, and you're going to help us out. So this is going to be good. So I guess I better get off the microphone so that you can get going on this and, uh, and have a great time with this. This is good. Thank you, Marty. Um, my name is John Ledbetter. I'm a principal planner, and I'm managing this uh, project. And uh, we are teaming with MIG, uh, our outreach consultants, and I'll turn the uh, agenda over to them in just a moment. But I would like to go over a few housekeeping items before we start. Uh, one of the first and most important items is it's really important that everybody go to our website uh, uplansb.org and register because that's really how we're communicating with everybody this time around. We are sending out some citywide mailers, but we're not doing any individual uh, mailings uh, or emails. All everything's going through the website, so you got to make sure you go to uplansb.org and register. That's key. Uh, the second item is this is a zero waste event, and so all the items, the food, the drink. It either goes in the yellow composting bins or it goes in the blue recycling. And then uh, third, the bathrooms are all located out the door and to your left. And um, to your right, excuse me, thank you. And, uh, and then uh, also we have translation in the back, Spanish translation. Uh, but I think everybody's getting caught at the door that needs that. So with that, I'd like to introduce our, uh, our consulting team, MIG. And tonight we have uh, Lou Hexter here and uh, Tim Carroll. They're going to help uh, us work through the, uh, all the different exercises. And so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Lou. Okay. Thanks, John. And thank you all again for being here tonight. I know there's lots of uh, competition for your time. And I hope you'll find tonight really useful and productive. I'd like to start out by just reminding you, if you don't already know, that this is the first of four um, workshops in this first series. So if you don't get enough of what you came for tonight, there are three other chances to uh, either come back or invite your friends and neighbors who didn't get a chance to come tonight to come back. And, and those are listed at the, at the um, bottom of this uh, handout you received at the front door. Um, tonight, what we'd like to do is kick things off with a brief presentation some background on, on where we've come from in Santa Barbara um, and, and some of the issues as, as staff and, and some of you have already told us you, you're really interested in. Just, some, just a brief overview of that, just to ground us in where we are today and what we might be thinking about as we plan for the future. So spend a few minutes just giving you some background information on that. And, and you also hopefully picked up a copy of the executive summary from the current conditions, trends, and issues report, which is on the back table. And again, 
that's just contextual for our conversation. We'll then spend a few moments um, as a large group and get this big group energy going about the vision for the future. And tonight, as we initiate this uh, process for the general plan update, we really want to focus on our vision, what we really hope the future of Santa Barbara will look like. And there'll be plenty of opportunity as we go down the road to talk about issues, concerns, and what policy uh, options we, we face to address some of those issues. And um, I, I don't want to discourage you completely from identifying those, but if we could spend a little bit of this general plan update process really talking about our hopes and aspirations and make sure that we hear each other and uh, find those common, common threads of, of hopes and visions, I think that will serve us well as we move forward in the general plan update process. So af after that big group discussion, we will be breaking into smaller groups to give more people an opportunity to speak up and, and share ideas. Um, you see them uh, assembled around the, the room. There's a few groups in here. There's a couple of breakout rooms over to the side, and we'll be sending you over there um, at that time. And what we'll be doing in the small groups is inviting you to comment on issues and opportunities or visions that you see in each of these um, category areas. And uh, we'll ask each of the small breakout groups to help develop the, its own agenda. So if you find yourself in a small group, you really have an opportunity to say what you're going to be discussing in that group. We'd love to hear from you on all six topics, but if, if most of you in that room really want to talk about environment or, educate, or the economy, um, you can help direct that, that conversation. We'll spend a little bit over an hour, 15, 20 minutes in those small groups and give you, as I say, that opportunity to, to talk with one another and provide some input. And we'd like at the end of that session for you as a group to kind of come back to the large group with your three, one to three really big ideas, things that maybe be pushing the envelope a little bit that really capture maybe a really grand idea uh, for the future of Santa Barbara and sharing those with the large group. I want to assure you, though, that everything that you talk about in the small group will be documented, will be captured, and will be um, moved forward in this process. So you don't need to worry that if your big idea doesn't get uh, reported out, that it's lost. We really do pay attention to absolutely everything that's, that's contributed in this process. And to that, if you're feeling a little bit uh, marginalized in the conversation, either in the big group or in the small group, we've provided those, those of you who, who feel that way, or anybody, to fill out the comment form. So this is your chance in your own words to say what your, the answers to these questions are. What do you love about Santa Barbara, the greatest assets, and what are you most concerned about? In your own words, you can fill this out and leave it with us tonight or return it um, to the planning division at your convenience. Um, this is another opportunity for your, you to say for your vision for the future. And lastly, before I give it back to John for our background, I just want to remind you again of the process. We, we provided this with you, uh, for you in the packet. This is an overview or, or a timeline of what we envision this process for the general plan update to look like and your opportunities to influence how things go. So um, we'll be reviewing this again <clears throat> both in the PowerPoint and also at the end of tonight's meeting just to encourage you to continue to participate. So I think that's pretty much an overview of what we've got going tonight. I hope everybody can stick around for the full time. We're really looking forward to hearing your ideas. And uh, just to get us kicked off, I guess I'll turn it back to John for a brief uh, PowerPoint. Thank you, Lou. And I will be very brief. Um, uh, this is really, as Lou said, is really, really the purpose of this is to set the context and give you some background. But the, purpose of, the real purpose of this meeting is to hear from you. So with that, um, let me just walk through um, some of these slides real quick, quickly with you. Um, you know, we have, as uh, uh, Marty said, we, we have a real long legacy of community planning here in Santa Barbara, and that's really driven a lot of what we've seen here and some of the results uh, that you see on the ground today. And I'd like to touch on some of that uh, history and a few of the issues that uh, we've uncovered uh, over the last uh, three or four years as we've uh, developed the uh, conditions, trends, and issues report. Uh, we finished our housing element update, all of which uh, included, uh, especially the housing element, a lot of outreach. And, and uh, so some of those issues, um, uh, I think I covered most of that. Uh, 
really the process started a couple years ago with the council uh, really affirming the council goals of the 1980s, last time the general plan was updated, and with very uh, few changes uh, to the goals that, that guided the process the last time we did the general plan update with the addition of, uh, of two of them. One of them was uh, sustainable principles. And uh, if you look in your packet there, uh, the handout, there is uh, a listing of those council goals that are really guiding our process here. But essentially what we're looking for in these first round of workshops are uh, what, what do you love about Santa Barbara, what are your concerns, and what are your hopes for the future? Some of the legacy here that we have in uh, Santa Barbara are, uh, are really a result of you. It's, it's you folks that have driven our agenda and have told us what the priorities are and what you love and cherish the most and what you want to see in that general plan and the policies that you want to see guiding it, uh, like our architecture, uh, like our open spaces, the waterfront, uh, Alice Keck Memorial Gardens, the D Douglas Family Preserve, again, all these are community-driven efforts. Our pedestrian-friendly downtown with mixed use, our growth management program, uh, Measure E, better known as Measure E, which is really one of the impetus for uh, updating our general plan this time, that this uh, charter amendment uh, it uh, sunsets in 2009, and uh, so that's one of the reasons we want, one of the things we need to look at as we go through this process. Some of the key issues and trends that we've uncovered through our Conditions, Trends, and Issues report include, um, well, this is, <laughs> this is the cover. You can go back there for a second. Uh, we have one display board in the back, and you can look uh, uh, during our breaks. I encourage you to look at the document. We do have the executive summary available, which is a very concise uh, summary of this very uh, uh, voluminous document. And uh, there are 14 different resource issues that we've studied and examined and tried to identify what are the key issues and concerns that, will, that we want the, the community to pay attention to in looking at uh, these future growth questions. So some of, the, uh, uh, some of the findings that have come out of this are that essentially Santa Barbara County is meeting most of the air of our uh, state and federal uh, standards and in fact motor vehicles and uh, the big barges out in the channel are one of our biggest sources of pollution and then um, one thing we're very proud of is we've just uh, completed our uh, baseline uh, emission standards or our greenhouse gases study. And so that's a springboard really for us to start measuring how we're doing. Water quality, there's about five, uh, five areas in the city that uh, uh, don't need federal standards and they're listed up there. Um, and urban runoff, of course, is a, uh, a major concern for us. Water supply, we have, uh, since the last drought, we've really diversified our water uh, supply sources and we have an incredible water conservation program here. So we're in pretty good position here uh, in terms of water supply uh, as we look into the future towards 2030. And um, that just gives you an idea of uh, the variability of rainfall. Solid waste, uh, Tahiguas has about a 15 year capacity. 63% of our waste is, is uh, currently diverted and we have a 70% goal at this time. Uh, El Estero is, um, uh, is functioning at a 77% capacity, although we do have some ability to expand there with new technologies. Uh, and then the downside is our collection system uh, because of inflow and infiltration uh, that does need to be repaired and upgraded, and that's quite a costly ongoing uh, capital cost. Parks and recreation. Some, some of our neighborhoods are not well served by neighborhood parks. Uh, the basic infrastructure, uh, some of our basic infrastructure improvements uh, need to be uh, uh, attended to. And um, we definitely have a, uh, a current need for more specialized indoor rec facilities and uh, any future growth will def definitely require, uh, will, will include uh, uh, increased demands on this uh, resource. Land use and housing, th these are big ones I think of concern to most of us. Um, 
uh, I mentioned Measure E, which expires in 2010. Right now we have about uh, 1,600 uh, residential units in our pipeline, and you can go back and look at, we have a little bit more detail on that. So a couple of those maps, again, during the break, show where all these pending and approved projects are located and uh, some of the statistics related to that, which are pr uh, pretty interesting. 53.8% of our units are owner-occupied, and this is a statistic that's um, been consistent since the 70s. Um, and, you know, our ho housing cost burdens, as I think everybody in this room knows, it affects both uh, uh, the renters and the homeowners. And, of course, preservation of our existing uh, housing stock is really important, all of which are, are outlined in our um, housing element. Uh, transportation, uh, again, this is no news to much to anybody really, you know, our, our freeway interchange, they're totally jammed up now and uh, below our current level of um, uh, acceptable service of C. Uh, we have invested increased money for transit, pedestrians and bicycle improvements, that's the good news, but unfortunately a lot of that is uh, dependent on uh, Measure D, uh, this regional uh, a funding source that, that was just turned down and, and is coming up for uh, another um, uh, voter approval in the next year. Uh, 101, of course, is congested in both directions during the peak hour, and then the, uh, the neighborhood traffic plans and you know how do people feel about those and the the uh, traffic diverters. Those are all current issues. Urban design and views, uh, preserving views is big. I mean, Santa Barbara, you know, we have our view views and our beaches. I mean, these, these are really character-defining elements of our community that are important to all of us. And there's a real emerging conflict here between our existing housing and circulation goals and some of um, our uh, real desire to maintain the small town, small scale ambience of our, uh, our community. So these are things that we need to look at, discuss, and work through as a community. These are key issues. So our process where we are today, um, uh, we've, as most of you, I've seen there's a lot of familiar faces out there. We've been doing our grassroots uh, listening tour, and uh, we, I think to date we've gone to 21 different groups, reached over three, 350 people. We got another eight or nine lined up with another uh, 200 people. Uh, that's just one way we're trying to reach out to the community, the people that don't feel comfortable like you do coming to these workshops. Um, and today is uh, round one uh, for our first set of community workshops to hear from you about what your vision, what your, can, your issues are, and, and some of the opportunities we have to uh, address those issues. Uh, we'll be going to the boards and commissions this uh, end of this summer, early fall, with our uh, summary of the workshops and uh, our findings from that. And then um, We'll be putting together a series of educational forums. We'll be partnering with uh, other community groups um, to look at ways that we can uh, uh, help define some of these urban planning issues that are so important to us but have broader um, implications. You know, uh, greenhouse gas, greenhouse gas is, is you know, a perfect example of one of these larger issues that has real ramifications for uh, some of these classic land use, transportation, housing issues. So we need to start looking at things a little bit differently and trying to make some of these connections and how we can come up with some uh, new solutions to uh, these more challenging problems. Uh, and then we'll have uh, another set of workshops in the spring, uh, late winter, early spring, where we'll start looking at some options. Based on what we've heard from you, uh, from these workshops, we can begin to put together sets of policies so that we can do some com comparisons and come back out to you and say, you know, what are the trade-offs here and what are the types of uh, policy options we can develop? Uh, and then again, we'll go back to our boards and commissions with a comprehensive community input that will include both uh, workshops and, uh, uh, and the policy options. And then from there, uh, we'll be developing a, uh, a strategic policy framework Again, uh, going out to the boards and commissions, and finally to the uh, city council. But it's all about you, folks. You're, <laughs> we depend on you, and uh, we need to hear from you. We need to, you to be engaged throughout the process, and so that's what we're here for tonight. Thank you, John. Okay.
So uh, probably a lot of that information was not news to many of you, um, but it does sort of point to what is of concern and what are our opportunities for addressing some challenging solutions. If you want to just raise the, um, the board. What we want to launch into now is a conversation with the large group so that all of you can hear ideas as they're coming, uh, coming up at us. And we wanted to pose those, those three questions that we've been talking about. What are your hopes for the future? Um, I, need to, I need my cheat sheet here. <laughs> what do you love about Santa Barbara? That's it. First thing, what do you love about this place? What, is the defining, what are some of the defining characteristics that you, you want to see preserved into the future? And what do you see as its major assets? Sort of maybe similar types of questions. And what are your visions for the future of the city? So it might, that last question might be something that doesn't exist today, but that you would really like to see developed or created over time. And the way that we're going to try and work this, there's a big group of you. I know many of you probably want to weigh in on this. Um, so we're going to have two microphones running on either side of the, of the hallway. Um, Tim's going to come up and take notes up on the big, big board here. Um, we're going to try and capture those ideas. Again, if you don't have a chance to speak in the large group session, please document your ideas on the, on the comment form. We definitely want to hear those. Um, so those are our questions for now. And um, George is on this side. I guess we need another runner on the other side. Or George, are you going to just do double duty? Yeah. He's going to come to you folks, OK? So you don't need to worry about getting up and, and moving. Just raise your hand, and I'll call on you, and I'll send George over to you. All right, so just on the first question, what do you love about Santa Barbara? I'd really like to hear some of those things that you really cherish about this community and think define it and want to see preserved into the future. George, if you'd start back with that gentleman in the back, we'll get underway. OK. What, what I love about Santa Barbara, can you hear it? Yeah, I can. Is that we just passed an RV ordinance. And down on the other side of the freeway, there are signs that say RVs, no parking between 12 and 6. Mm -hmm. Well, the ordinance really is also intended for any vehicle. If someone's living in their, or mm -hmm. sleeping in their auto or van, that's included. So I love the way we have not to put that into the, the public and told them this. <laughs> so uh, I think that's, you know, part of Santa Barbara's trickery. They did the same thing when we had closure, beach closures. Uh -huh. In 1990, had all the floods. So what they do, they changed the, warn the warning, closure signs to warning signs. It's another little trick that Santa Barbara, I love that. I think that's a, a great way that uh, we double speak to the whole community and uh, keep Santa Barbara a beautiful place, quality okay. of life. All right, I th did you capture that? All right, so I think you're being, a I'm, I'm detecting a little bit of facetiousness in there. What you love about Santa Barbara is um, Maybe what you would like to see is maybe more clarity and more forthrightness in the and enforcement of, of ordinances. All right. Let's talk about what we really do love, <laughs> really do love about Santa Barbara and would like to see um, preserved. I'm going to go to this gentleman, Gil, I think, and then a couple of hands in the back. Okay. What I love about Santa Barbara is the small town character. Okay. And I love the fact that 99% of the buildings are one and two story buildings. Mm -hmm. And you can get sunlight into the Paseo, sunlight into the plazas. You can have trees growing up as tall as the roofs of the buildings. You can see the mountains. And it's that one and two story character that's so special, the small town character. All right. So that human scale that we were talking about in the small town ambiance, how do we preserve that into the future? OK, let's, let's just keep on going. And I grew up in Santa Barbara. I, I was born here at Cottage Hospital. And what I really love about Santa Barbara is that uh, as I was growing up, I got to play in the canyons and I got to play on the beaches. And I would really like all children to be able to do that mm -hmm. and to be able to um, grow up in those canyons and beaches and be able to bike to the, to the beach and um, hike. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing I really love about it. I've lived all over the world and come back to Santa Barbara because that's what I love those open spaces and opportunities to, to play and experience those open spaces. Okay? Right down the, I think, the row from her. Okay. Um, what I love about Santa Barbara is the architecture. Okay. And uh, I also love that uh, we have been able to preserve the historic structures, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that we still have them. Right. Definitely a defining characteristic of this town is your, your character, your architecture. Um, go ahead. 
What I love about Santa Barbara is that you've been, we're a small town and yet we have all the big city amenities, mm -hmm. symphony, etc. And all these are so accessible to us, we don't have to drive for hours to do it. And I want to be sure that that's preserved and we don't get overly congested with traffic. Great. Great. So some cultural opportunities that you don't necessarily find in many small towns, you, you have that here. Yes? I love the small town feeling in that we do, aren't built up several stories high as in the so-called smart growth or urban village thing where people are packed in together. It's a feeling of freedom. You can breathe. You can see. And I hope that is preserved. Great. So another articulation of that small town feel, slow, low scale. I, I am going to get over to the other side. I just want to kind of wrap up with a few hands that I've seen here and you all will be next. So Liz, right there. Julie, I'm sorry. Hi. Um, I think what I love most about Santa Barbara is its setting. The fact that we can stand in the middle of downtown and look down towards the ocean mm -hmm. and turn around and look back up at the mission. And I would really like to see those views um, Preserved. I object to buildings like Levytown and things like that going into Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And I also think that Santa Barbans appreciate those views. I think we need a, a view ordinance to protect structures that are already built mm -hmm. and protect the views of the ocean and the mountains. Thank Great. you. Great. So views, again, another defining characteristic of the city. Seeing the ocean, seeing the mountains, seeing the mission, and, and having access to all of that. Okay. I see a couple more hands over here. I'm not seeing a whole lot over here. Are you all awake over? Okay, two, three. Okay, great. Go, go ahead. Hi. Um, I actually like the small town character of Santa Barbara too, but I kind of understand it differently than the previous two speakers. Okay. Uh, what I really like is that there's an end to Santa Barbara. There's sort of a city and then it ends. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't sprawl outward endlessly. That's really what I noticed down south more. And I also um, like the small town character that we're still a city that ha has all sorts of people, not just a rich suburb of some kind, not, not another not La Jolla, mm -hmm. but different kinds of people and just ordinary and uh, you know very <laughs> normal people. So that is something I would like to see preserved. Great. So diversity of types of people that, that live here, right next to her, as long as you're there. <laughs> Could you speak a little right, right into the mic? Almost the, eat it. One of the things I love about this place is our tradition of self-determination. We have made the decisions about our size and, and the growth uh, ourselves rather than having these things determined as they are in most places by forces beyond our control. And I just hope that this process allows our citizens to enforce our own decisions about our size and our future growth. Great. Okay. Um, Julie, back to, onto your side. Um, I really like the nature of Santa Barbara, and I really like the transportation system we have here. I think it also can be improved, and the oceans are really nice. Okay, good. And just down the road, I think. I like the uh, social economic diversification of Santa Barbara. I would like to see it maintained. And also the fact that Upper State Street, as of right now, has not been um, overly developed, and I'd like to see it remain that way. Okay. So another um, comment about the diversity that we see in our community and just the, the containment of development, scale of the development as it stands, you think is, is worth preserving. Okay. George, where are you? This gentleman in the back has been waiting, I think, and then we'll work our way back up front. What I love about Santa Barbara is the city's commitment to historic preservation, both in El Pueblo Viejo and in the uh, uh, residential community surrounding it. And that has to do with viewscape. It has to do with building height and scale. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that we will continue to have that focus on historic preservation that we've had up until this point. Okay, good. So we're, we're hearing um, some repeated themes. Um, the, the character, the architecture, the views, the scale. Gentlemen? Yes, um, 
I also agree with the, the small, character, uh, small town characteristics of the town. I think that's wonderful. And I'm just concerned that we're losing that character, uh, especially on Lower State Street. It's kind of turning into a Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive kind of thing, and I'd really hate to see that happen. So okay. hopefully we'll preserve that. Okay, good. And we can get into some more details about those issues that you see threatening some of these um, assets and things that you love in our small group. Um, discussion. So again, things that you love, the assets that you think are really key to defining Santa Barbara as it is and that you want to see preserved. So um, George, this young lady here, and then we'll, this gentleman here. Hello. Um, I really like the El Carrillo housing project that went in for very affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I think the City Housing Authority does really exceptionally beautiful housing for very affordable units, and mm -hmm. I think that's, they've just done a great job with that project. Great, thanks for saying that. And this, just pass the microphone up to this gentleman here, thanks. Thanks for having this forum. Um, I like Santa Barbara to have uh, motor vehicle traffic levels at service C or better. Mm -hmm. I like Santa Barbara to have mountain views sort of with only a half a minute to a one minute mm -hmm. walk from wherever anyone may be. Mm -hmm. I like the 58% rental occupancy that you cited. Mm -hmm and not for that to get any lower. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, creek corridors running through the city for um, water quality, uh, fish and wildlife habitat, and aesthetic beauty. Okay, great. So you've helped us transition a little bit into some of the visions that uh, we'd like to see moving on. <laughs> of course, well, tonight's really about you know, shooting for what we're, what we're looking to shoot for. The, the how we get there is um, for our following up conversations. And, and your input on that as well will be in, important. Okay, this, this, this lady. Oh, I'm sorry, um, can you, those last couple of uh, visions for you, the, the creek corridors you'd like to see perhaps maintained, preserved, um, access to views, right? Uh, the, the rental percentage, percentage of rental housing, you'd like to see not get any lower than that. Again, expressing um, the idea that you value the, the economic diversity in Santa Barbara, okay? Traffic level C was an important uh, little benchmark there. Like to keep um, traffic levels or maintain traffic levels at that at that level. Okay, uh, Tim will catch up. And if we don't capture it up here, please make sure it's on your comment form. Okay, where are we with the mic? Okay. Um, what I like about Santa Barbara is the art and the cultural uh, offerings it's always had. Um, and uh, uh, I'd like to see it a little bit more accessible to s some of the um, members of the community that don't really know it's there. Okay. Um, and I've always appreciated the funk zone and some of the industrial areas where artists could get affordable studios that are rapidly disappearing, mm -hmm. if not completely disappeared. Okay. Um, that's okay, great. So the cultural assets, the art, art assets, and that diversity that we're, we've been talking about. Okay, let's move back over here. Yeah, one of the things I love about Santa Barbara is our uh, kind of progressive liberal culture and the, the ability for the community to really get into activism mm -hmm. and all of the nonprofits that people actually work in the city. Great. So that progressive liberal culture that you have here, the active nature of your citizenry, and that's definitely an asset for, for the community. Okay, um, why don't you start moving up this way. George, do you have our next comment back here? Hello, what I like about Santa Barbara are the adults uh, ed program at the Wake Center and, uh, and the Shot Center. Okay. And also I like the trolley bus that runs up and down State Street. <laughs> okay, so the adult programs and the trolley, great assets as well. Okay, where are we? Yes. Let's uh, see here. Um, I like the fact that, like, I like the fact that this is a big city, but it's not. It's, um, uh, and the other thing I like is, is I like the fact that, uh, and I like the fact that our, I like the fact that our, City elected officials actually listen to what we want and not make like and not make um, choices um, without talking to us first. 
that's nice because in a lot of cities that I've lived in, it's not like that. It's 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 totally the not like that at all. It's it's um, w but but what I do wish would be later on for us is I'd like to see more affordable more affordable more affordable more affordable housing for people that are uh, for people that are also uh, disabled because I've noticed that there's a lot of housing but a lot of it's not well I noticed that a lot of it is not wheelchair uh, wheelchair uh, yeah wheelchair um, wheelchair accessible. yeah accessible okay good thank you so you had a couple of points you like the fact that the city officials are listening and that you would like to see more affordable housing, especially for the disabled, and wheelchair accessibility. Great. Yeah, good evening. I, I like that Santa Barbara has been putting its growth in the urban core along State Street, and that's where we should be putting affordable workforce housing okay. in the future. Great. So again, something you like and something you'd like to see perpetuated or a vision for the future, continue to see uh, development there. Okay, this gentleman, this gentleman, and we'll, we'll be back on this side. Couple in the back, let's not forget about that. I, I really like the walking character of the city. I actually live four blocks away, so it's, it's great to have that as part of the city. Okay, walkability, it's accessible that way. Okay, um, George, where are you? Can we grab that gentleman in the back? A couple of them who've been waiting, thank you. I really love the ruggedness of the nature here, whether it's the beach or the creeks, the, it's not well, um, it's not overly done. It's got its natural feel to it and its wildness. And I love the, uh, the bikeability and the walkability of living downtown. Mm -hmm. my, one of my visions for the city that I think that would take up really well here is to create a, a permaculture zone, a kind of a, a new sustainability for zero waste as well as, as a proactive way to get people involved in educating them about how we can not only make a better place for ourselves, but for our grandchildren and their grandchildren as well. Could you say that, what kind of zone were you saying? Permaculture zone. Okay, uh, permaculture, per permaculture. Is, thank you. It's I a design science about sustainability. Very good, okay, thank you, that's good. And just as a, a point of um, process, if we'd, we'd like to move into the visions as well at this point. So if you have an idea for something that doesn't exist that you don't, necessarily see around you now, but you'd like to put, throw it out as a potential vision for the future. Let's, let's also capture those as well. Um, this gentleman right here, and then you, sir. Okay. Well, I also like the uh, fact that the city is listening, and uh, I like the geography and the climate, primarily. Hard to beat, I would agree. Okay. Yeah. This, I yes. like the recent improvements in public transportation. Uh, buses run more frequently. Even this way, I don't know how many of you noticed it, ridership uh, is, is rising. I had to stand most of the time from La Cumbre downtown in the number 11 bus, even though it, the buses there come every 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. I hope we can have more of that as is part of my vision. My other part is to really live up to our reports about air quality. Mm -hmm. uh, John was saying Santa Barbara County meets most uh, standard state and federal that's not what i noticed when i last looked at the website of the air pollution control district where mm -hmm. it said that state standards are not in attainment in the whole county mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. i really wonder whether the most uh, congested parts of the city of santa barbara which as a whole only have one air pollution monitoring station right. further up from the congested areas uh, is anywhere near attainment, uh -huh. and I really think that more buses help that, right. but we have to really face the facts rather than tell ourselves we are okay about air quality. Right. So don't be lulled into a false sense of, of complacency about air quality. Let's really keep a close watch on it and make sure that, that that's a key element in quality of life. 
for sure. Right, right. So don't lull into complacency. Okay. George, are we back to you here? Yeah, I think this is kind of a combination of what I like about Santa Barbara and a, and a vision and, and to reiterate the, the large number of nonprofits that are very well versed and very well trained in environmental and social justice issues. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to see is, as a vision for the future is that the city develop a committee that's in part uh, not only city employees, but also members of these community organizations to develop a long-term sustainability plan mm -hmm. for the city that would include water quality, that would include transportation and energy, mm -hmm. and that would increase, not decrease, the, the number of local farms that are in our area so that we can actually attain um, a sustainable food, food source and water source, but mm -hmm. to actually reach out and use those local organizations Great. to do what they are very good at. Great. So establishing some kind of ongoing sustainability task force or commission that could keep its eyes on these issues and and use the, the assets, as you say, of all of these um, nonprofits and folks that are really interested and active in these areas. Great. Okay. Another comment here and then, good. We have a few more minutes to devote to this. Go ahead. Okay, two. Um, what I love about Santa Barbara is that it's a very green city. And I mean that literally in that the landscaping is incredible. You put something in the ground and it grows. And, and everywhere you look, it is green. That's important. The, in, the, the relationship of interior to exterior. Mm -hmm. The desire, the vision is that we are a green city in that we are a leader for environmentalism across the country mm -hmm. um, as we pretend to be, but that we really do it. Yeah. So a leader for environmentalism in the country. Okay. Putting that out there, being on the cutting edge. Okay, Julie? I'd really like to see Santa Barbara be a community that not only supports the environment, but also really supports health, um, health of our people in a very fundamental way. We can design a city that really uh, includes elements that reduce the rate of obesity, of cardiovascular disease, of diabetes, asthma, and injury, and we really need to do that. Um, we can create neighborhoods that are walkable, that are bikeable, that promote physical activity, that ensure convenient access to uh, affordable and healthy food, reduce air pollution, and provide a wide variety of affordable housing op op options for people, uh, especially our health care workforce, because they're not living in Santa Barbara, a great number of them. Mm -hmm. So the vision for maintaining and enhancing Santa Barbara as a healthy place to live that supports community health and, and it provides those opportunities. Great. Okay. Yes. I would like to see the 60-foot uh, building height replaced by a 40-foot or a three-story maximum. Okay. And I would like to see setbacks from property lines at the minimum or at least stepped construction so that you don't face a magnificent wall of three stories as you walk down the sidewalk. Yes. Okay. So again, height limits and setback issues. We'll get into some of those details in our small groups, but a, again, a vision for the scale and character of, of um, building building footprints and developments. Okay, let me take somebody who hasn't had a had a chance yet. Okay, uh, George, how about this gentleman here, Chris? Hi there. Um, you know, one thing that I would like to see is that there's that what he said over there is more affordable housing for the disabled. And um, right now, there's a freeze, a freeze on Section 8 voucher, vouchers. I would like to see um, more Section 8 vouchers being um, issued. Issue. Okay. All right. So again, access to affordable housing is another key thing that we're seeing as a vision, making, maintaining and enhancing our diversity um, here in the community. Okay. Um, I would like to see a completely pesticide-free Santa Barbara. Okay. Okay. That's a good vision. Is that part of our healthy city as well? Um, pesticide-free. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, a gentleman made a comment that we have uh, input and control over growth in Santa Barbara, and that's not true. 
Anybody that's opposed a project in Santa Barbara now will find out that the developers are in charge. You hire a consultant to get it through. They modify every ordinance. My vision is we stop modifying for the developers. It's who you know and how much money you have. And my vision is no more buildings like that on, on Chapala Street. Shame on our government. That's their legacy and monument. Shame on them for putting that in Santa Barbara. And if you think we have control, by the time we get done with this meeting, a lot of buildings will be up like that. They're in the pipeline. Okay. So keeping, <clears throat> keeping our ordinances intact. Yes. Okay. Um, I love the political activism within the Santa Barbara community and the um, acceptance and understanding of demonstrations. And uh, a vision I would like to see is um, in terms of trans transportation, um, more accessible bike routes that are safer and uh, you know. accessible bike routes. Safe, accessible and safe bike routes, making it a, even a more bike friendly city. Okay, go ahead, Julie, and then we'll be back over here to George. Just a few more comments and then we're going to break into our small groups. You'll have a lot more opportunity to, to talk about your visions and opportunities. Sir. Um, one of the things that I love about Santa Barbara is the Spanish and Mexican heritage of Santa Barbara, uh, the way that the town is in touch with its historical roots in a, lot of, in a way that a lot of towns in California are not, mm -hmm. although only in some of the superficial ways, not, not in some of the deeper ways, unfortunately. And also uh, I love about Santa Barbara that it's the right size. It's the right size be between a small town and a small city. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, that um, theme of scale we've been hearing is just about right. Okay, George, a couple of folks on your side. I'm going to take about three or four more comments, and then I think it's going to be time for us to join our small group. So, sir, go ahead. Thank you very much. I'm a little nervous. This is a big crowd. Um, there, my list for things I like about Santa Barbara is very extensive, so I'll skip that. The vision, however, I'd like to piggyback on the affordable housing, and we mentioned ordinances. I'd like to see some rent caps. Uh, it, it, you know, limit the amount of rent money that these people can get. For a two bedroom, one bath, you're talking $2,400 a month. People making $36,000 can't do that. Along with the health thing, and this will be really quick, I, I love the fact that we're very diverse and we accept people the way they are. But we need to help these people on the street. Uh, they're mentally ill. It is not humane to let them wander around like wild dogs. We need to help them get them off of the street and care for them. Okay. And this, this lady right here, and then I'm going to take two more over on this side, and then we'll... All I wanted close. to do was uh, back up the lady who, who talked about the pesticides because uh -huh. it is so imperative that the secondary poisoning and stuff that we're doing to the owls and the falcons and stuff like that, and killing them off so we can't get rid of the, the, the rats and the, and the squirrels correctly. Mm -hmm. So all we do is poison all the way up to the mountain lions and that is so sad, it's probably very, very bad for us too. So I'd like to see the city knock it off. Okay, <laughs> knock it off. Okay, a couple more comments in the, over here. <laughs> I would ahead. just uh, like to see that when a project takes out rental housing, that that rental housing is replaced and that the loopholes be closed for like the two-step process where someone applies for an apartment uh, building permit and they change that midstream and get their um, exclusionary, their, their really high-priced de uh, development in. Okay. So where, where development re um, displaces rental housing, you'd like that um, replaced or kept? Okay. One more um, vision comment for, t for this session, and then we'll, we'll adjourn to our small groups. And before you run away, I'll, I'll just have a, a few directions for that. So. In one of the comments I have, I have that we would amend our voting in Santa Barbara so we could vote by, uh, by district, so the neighborhoods would be sure to have proper representation. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, I know there's, I saw more hands generated as we started the ball rolling. So I know I'm, we're just getting warmed up. This is a great chance for us to adjourn to a smaller setting, I'll give you an opportunity to talk about um, issues that are of great concern to you and also opportunities and visions. Um, the way we've organized, if you um, look at your name tag, you should see a, a number, one through five, I believe. Is that right? One through, f one through four? One through four. <clears throat> In a moment, you're going to be 
joining your fellow citizens around um, a circle to discuss these elements of our of our community or whatever else is on your mind. But we'd like each group to consider issues and opportunities related to the housing and neighborhoods. We've already heard a lot about what you value in, in terms of um, the housing stock and what your visions are. Transportation, the environment, the economy, design of the community. We heard a lot of you say that you value um, the aesthetic character and are concerned about maintaining the scale and as well as community services and facilities. Those are the types of things that we'd like your input on here and anything else that, that uh, is, is really important to you. This is your opportunity to kind of raise um, the, the, the issue in, in, and get it discussed. At the conclusion of about, we have about an hour and a half in our small groups, maybe a little less uh, by the time we get there. At the, at the end, we'd like you to think about what's been discussed in your group and bring back to the large group something you'd like to share with us. One to three really big ideas um, that you think as a group represent a, a vision for the future for Santa Barbara, a direction that you'd like to see the city uh, consider going in. And that's our output for that. We would like to invite you all back to hear the big ideas from each of the small groups and, and please come back for that. And then we will conclude tonight with just a reminder of where we go from, from here. The next steps in the process, as we mentioned, there are a few more events like this that you can go to or invite your friends and neighbors to attend. So um, those of you who have a one on your name tag will be coming up to the front here and we'll um, create a little circle up here. If you have a two on your name tag, you'll be over here. Group three looks like is over here. And group four is in one of these small, small rooms over here. If we have overflow, we'll, we'll set up another uh, group over there. So we'll see you on, at about um, 8.45 back in the large room. Okay, there's quite a good buzz that we generated in the small groups. That's good to see. Um, we're going to spend the next few minutes just hearing one to three big ideas from the small group sessions. And that way you can, um, you can hear what other folks have come up with in terms of visions and opportunities for the future. Um, if, uh, if you are leaving us before the end of the meeting, I just want to remind you that the comment forms are of great interest to, to us, so would you leave them at the front table on your way out? Um, we're going to just hear from each of the five small groups that we're meeting. And um, before we get started, I'd just like to say um, thanks to the facilitators um, and record and scribes who are working diligently to keep all the comments coming and, and documented. And as I mentioned, we even though we're just hearing a few good big ideas in the report backs, we are going to be taking all of the flip chart pages back and and summarizing those for the city. So no comment or idea is going to be lost from tonight's session. I also would like to say, um, you know, we do these sessions a lot in, in cities around California, and um, at least I can speak for my group. It, the conversation was conducted with a great deal of civility and respect um, and appreciation for one another's ideas, and I, I've, I found that, you know, very refreshing. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, cities that, that um, you get a lot of contention right from the get-go. And um, there were divergent opinions, but they were expressed in a very respectful manner. manner. So I'd really like to um, give you all um, a round of applause for your participation. Let's thank everybody for, for doing a good job of, of speaking up tonight. So let's um, start with, I guess I'm a planner. I'll start with group number one. Um, we'll just go around the room. Who's our reporter from group number one? Chris, or Adam, sorry. Um, yeah, let's give you this one. Okay. Okay. All right, so we, we talked about a lot of things. Um, I really like the way Julie summarized it. Our guiding principles should include hot sustainability. So we're going to make sustainability sexy again. Um, <laughs> but hot is actually housing, open space, and transportation. The point being is that we looked at it as we can't actually talk about this plan by parsing it out into environment and transportation and everything else. We have to look at it holistically. We really have to look at it as an integrated approach. Otherwise, we're simply going to create problems every time we try to create a solution. And so to, to create a plan that is holistic, that takes into consideration the environmental, the social, the economic, that considers the housing, transportation, universal design, and youth services that makes Santa Barbara a model for other communities. 
doesn't just do it because we can do it, but actually does it with the, with the idea that we are going to serve as an example so that other communities can come and learn from us and in hopes maybe even create that new tourist industry. Great. And then I would add to that that there's no way we're going to be able to come up with all these ideas for the next hundred years and so we should put into place a, a, some sort of committee that can do this adaptive management each year or each couple of years or each five years that really takes in a diversity of the community, not just the city planners, but also the nonprofits, local community members that can, can continue to reevaluate the plan and continue to update it. Great. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Group One. Good job. Some really, really good big ideas from that group. Okay, Group Two over here. Who's our reporter? Come on up and tell us what you came up with. Good, then I can read it better. Um, our group came up with four categories, transportation, environment, economy, and public services facilities. And we had some very big ideas. Some were pragmatic, some weren't. Uh, transportation, reroute 101 inland, and need a regional high-speed rail up to the Bay Area. And another uh, smaller idea shared taxis, jitneys, and collectivos that could run around town. Second was environment and a recycling liaison to apartments and businesses to encourage more recycling locally. And the second was better education on recycling, i.e. inserts into water bills or folded stickers that go on your recycling container so you know what you're supposed to uh, recycle and the other was let's get garbage turned into energy and um, the third was the economy use the um, redevelopment agencies money to turn large commercial spaces into small spaces for local businesses the fourth was public services facilities and suggestion was to purchase the armory and the arm Army Reserve site and turn them into teen centers. I think that's all. Yes. That's, that's plenty of big ideas. Thank you, group two. Good job. Okay. Did you get that, Daniel? Okay, group three. Our group over here, Tim, going to do the report? There's a lot of synchronicity from the first two groups in our group because our acronym would have been T, which would be transportation, education, and environment. And we really felt that the, maybe someone from the school board could be invited to get the educational community involved because so many of our issues about transportation come back to our thinking patterns and our habit patterns. And if we get some education about the alternatives, we might change some of those patterns. And there was a strong feeling that, that addressing the transportation where people were more mobile on their feet and on their bicycles in safe ways that that would address their health and that would address the congestion of the traffic in the community and also that thing that we're so aware of now, all the carbon that's being spewed out. If we're on foot or on bike, we're not spewing out any carbon and that's helping the environment. So that was the main gist of our group. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Hand for group three. Okay, and group four. Who's our reporter? Betty? Betty. We were talking and talking and talking, and then when it became time to um, pick somebody, everybody was already filing out of the room because we had to be here, and so they picked me. So anyway, the talk was great. Um, in our group, there was quite a bit of time on housing issues and the character of our community and then um, transportation. We had intended to spend more time on environment and other things to see how they all interrelate. We also had health. Um, so there was a lot of questioning of what's behind these issues in our community. So the big ideas that came out of it is what we're really dealing with principally is a growth issue in our community and how are we going to grow and how do we control that growth in what ways and what are the consequences have it. But, so we were, it was a lot of questioning versus 
a lot of specific ideas. And when we tried to develop ideas in the group about getting more people out of their cars, again, it, it came back to the questions of how are we grappling with these big issues. And wanting to achieve a balance, and a balance that works for this diverse community. Again, um, a balance where people with special needs and disabled and seniors and children, where we really address the needs of all those people in our community. Um, and uh, again, we spent a lot of time on transportation, so we had a very brief discussion about closing streets and um, making just many streets in our community more pedestrian friendly as a way to promote um, uh, livability in our community, both for health reasons and less congestion and air pollution and traffic. And so walking was talked about quite a bit. So someone said close um, State Street downtown, look at losing lanes on different streets and making the streets available to the people. So I think those were the main issues. Good. Thank you, Group 4. Good job. Okay, and you might expect Group 5. Here we go. Can you use that one, Vijaya? Last but not least, right? Um, our, our group talked about all of the things that um, were mentioned by um, uh, the previous group. And um, we mostly concentrated on, on housing, although we touched on all of the topics. Uh, three big ideas are, first, increase the transfer fee so that there's less speculation. So for, for people who are turning over homes, uh, buying, selling, uh, if we transfer, if we use that, we charge them a transfer fee and um, use that fee to go into the uh, housing, the downtown workforce. So there are two parts to this. First, charge the fee and then uh, use the fee to, um, to go into downtown housing, uh, ho workforce housing. The second big idea was assess what other cities have done. And the third big idea was integrated transportation. Uh, why, why, uh, the question came up, why are we building uh, the transit village downtown? It should be close to the station. So those were our three big ideas. But we, we touched on everything. And uh, uh, we had lots of good ideas, actually, but we, we winnowed it down to three. Okay, and this assess what other cities have done, is that in relation to the workforce housing or is it in relation to everything? In, in relation to everything. All right, yes. so you want to benchmark against what other cities are exactly. doing. Exactly. Okay. That was the word that was used, benchmark. Okay, uh, it, yeah. very good. Well, we've captured the big ideas up here on the wall. Um, it's great that you were able to um, synthesize and winnow down all of the conversations into a few pithy um, remarks, and uh, we will take these forward, as I mentioned. So thanks again for your, your great participation tonight. I want to mention that uh, we have three more of these round one workshops where we're going to be asking the same questions. What do you love about Santa Barbara? What are the assets that you see are significant? And what is your vision for the future? And what are you most concerned about? At uh, the upcoming workshops, next is uh, Saturday from 9 to noon at La Casa de la Raza on Montecito Street. Um, Thursday the 28th, Westside Community Center uh, in evening, and another Saturday morning workshop on July 7th at the Hope School. So um, you're welcome to come back and participate again. If you know of somebody who wasn't able to come tonight and you think they would really uh, enjoy this session, please encourage them to come to one of the, the follow-up sessions. We will be, um, as we discussed at the beginning, uh, going into our, a series of educational forums in the fall to kind of explore and develop some policy options. Our next round of community workshops will be to evaluate and discuss those public policy options related to these important issues. And so please stay, in tu stay tuned. Uh, we mentioned the website, www.myplan.org. And if you go there and register, you will... I'm sorry, my... You plan. I'm sorry, my plan. I was really my plan. You plan. Thank you. Just seeing if anybody was paying attention. You plan, you actually, you plan Santa Barbara.org. Where is it? It's you plan SB. It's all over, all over the material. So I, Y O U P L A N S B dot org. Um, go there, register. You will be kept informed of 
upcoming events, and um, there will be access to documents on the website that have been generated, including summaries of tonight's forum, as well as the ones coming up. So please do stay involved and engaged. It's clear that you care very much about the city, and we really appreciate your participation tonight. Good night, and thanks again for coming.